<sighs> I'm really sleepy. It's really early. Jam dropping. Jam dropping. Jam dropping. I'm dropping on these hoes. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, well now I am totally woke, y'all. Hello everyone, I decided to visit Amanda Seal's YouTube channel again. A link to my first trip into the land of gem dropping is in the description, if you are at all curious. So, what wisdom dost thou have for us today, Amanda? The difference between a white savior and a white ally. White ally versus white savior. Presumably one is preferable to the other? Okay. Both would indicate people functioning as helpers in some fashion. So, I have to assume the differential is a question of the deferential. Now see, listen, both folks are coming from a good place. But... But white saviors don't know their place. White saviors don't know their place. That is is a very interesting way to put it. Go on. White saviors are the ones who enter a situation where they can help with their white privilege or simply by just being a good person and attempt to dominate the black people in that situation. White saviors are dominant. Got it. White saviors show up thinking they know everything and they haven't even asked any questions because they're too busy talking about what they came to do. White saviors are outspoken and enthusiastic about being helpful. Got it. Black people of the world, I am Ashley H. And I have come to cure you of all of your woes. I have voted for Obama twice. I saw Selma and the 13th, Ava Dupes is a maze. And every first Thursday of the month, I volunteer at an inner city high school in Chicago for two hours. So. I know your struggle. Um, thanks, Ashley. But actually, we had a question about... Excuse me, sister. I'm helping. <laughs> Anywho. Ah, okay. So a white savior is someone who is arrogant and domineering, talking down to others and inflating minor inconveniences into self-declared hardships. Behaving that way towards others is a bad thing. Got it. White allies know how to step in a situation and become a part of the landscape that's fixing the problem and not try to be the whole landscape that fixed the problem. Right. White allies know their place. And so long as they stay in line, they'll never risk being looked down upon. Because they know their place. Got it. White allies know that when they enter a landscape where they can help black people, it's really about using their privilege to empower the black people that are already there doing the work and also to use their privilege to engage with and challenge the white people who are an impediment to those black people doing the work. Right. White allies empower black people, who obviously cannot empower themselves, and as well oppose other white people who are the enemies of black empowerment. White allies must strengthen and defend black people. That is their place in the landscape. Got it. White saviors, what they don't understand is that when they try to dominate the situation, they are actually still exerting their white privilege in a harmful way. Okay, so exerting white privilege in a fashion that a black person finds to be too domineering makes an ally into a savior and being a savior is bad. So, really, the safest course to be a white ally is to hand complete control of your sense of self-worth over to black people, who know best, because they're black. Friendly white people only fall into one of these two categories, and friendly white people never want to be on the wrong side of history. And I understand how that happens. We could have a festival of just the, if it wasn't for this white person film. 
Oh boy, movies. I love movies. Dangerous Minds. Thank goodness this cool white lady showed up in her leather jacket to rap with Coolio about teaching us how to read. Aha! Okay, so Michelle Pfeiffer's character in Dangerous Minds was a white savior, not a white ally. Thus her motives were false, and the outcomes of her efforts were invalid. Got it. Freedom Riders, thank goodness this other cool white lady showed up to once again teach us how to read. Aha! So, Freedom Riders, which is based on the true story of teacher Erin Gruel, who worked to teach her students about the dangers of racism and hate, her story is one of a white savior, not a white ally. Her story was one of arrogance and selfishness. Got it. Finding Forrester. Thank goodness this cool old ornery white man showed up to show me that I already knew how to read. Um, did you actually watch Finding Forrester? Jamal already had a scholarship coming his way before he began working with Forrester. And when the villain of the story, an evil, evil white man who assumed Jamal must be a plagiarist based on his race and class, Forrester comes out of his physical and psychological seclusion to show up the evil white man and empower Jamal. But Forrester is still a white savior, huh? He was arrogant and selfish. He actually didn't know his place. Got it. So of course when you're shown constant images of white people being supplanted in a situation and all of a sudden making everything better, you're gonna think, hey, I have the power to do that too. But guess what? There were a bunch of people there before you that were doing stuff, okay? And a lot of folks don't understand that when you come in and you dominate the situation, you are still a part of the problem and you're not helping the problem. Right. The safe thing to do is to be entirely subservient to black people and wait for them to tell white people what to do and how to do it. I think I understand, Amanda. But, gosh, how can I, a white person, tell when I'm being domineering rather than being a good ally? I get a lot of people asking me, Amanda, I'm a white person and I want to help. What can I do? The first step to being a white ally is to understand that it is not black people's responsibility to give you an IKEA step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to dismantle the racism that your ancestors created and that some of your folks continue to uphold. Oh, so I can't show up with a plan that's being dominant, but I also can't ask to be told what to do because it's not black people's job to instruct me. I have to live in a constant state of second-guessing and fear that I might be acting too domineering and becoming a savior rather than remaining a humble ally. I cannot argue with logic like that. This is really hard. Um, was... That your caricature of a white ally? Or were you portraying your own sense of self-awareness as to how convoluted, contradictory, and condescending this presentation is? White allies create and support platforms and safe spaces for people of color to speak their truths, uninterrupted by white privilege. Right. White allies work to lift up and empower black people to speak, but ensure that they, themselves, remains subservient and silent. Got it. White allies educate themselves. They research, they listen, they hit the Googles. One thing that this movement has that the civil rights movement didn't is the internet. Use it. Right, the internet. That's where white allies have to go to find out information because it's not black people's job to explain their place to them. It's white allies' job to find their place through the internet. Would any of that interneting involve watching videos by Amanda Seals explaining what it is to be a good white ally over being a bad white savior? Because wouldn't that be a black person educating white people on, um... This is really hard. Here are some white allies who can definitely show you the way. Matt McGoy from How to Get Away with Murder and Orange is the New Black. I mean, just look at his Twitter feed and you'll get some tips. Matthew McGorry, 
A certified good white ally. Got it. Rowan Blanchard, ooh, she's a young white ally coming out of Disney Channel and just hitting you with nothing but the truth. Follow her Instagram. Rowan Blanchard, a 15-year-old actress. She's a good white ally. Got it. And just look at me. Um, look at you. Are you a good white ally, Amanda? And is that it? Two modern television personalities are the only good white allies worth mentioning? You think I'm able to get these platforms by myself? No, but I do have a team of folks that include white allies that make it their business to empower my voice as an honest, truth-speaking, funny-ass black woman. So, save for other people, you could not have what you have. The platforms you enjoy, your television show, your roles in TV and in movies, this very YouTube production, you are the beneficiary of other people's work on your behalf. Wow, you are a very, very privileged person, Amanda. And yet, you're not white. Huh. Most importantly, white allies understand that though race is some bullshit, it does have real life consequences. Race is some bullshit? Then why do you call them white allies and white saviors? Why do you say black people? Um... This is really hard. And that it is their position and their role to be a part of actively challenging that without speaking over black people who are actively challenging that. Right. White people need to know their place. They need to know that black people take precedence over them, even though race is bullshit, and it's not black people's job to educate white people on what to do, though it's apparently Amanda Seal's job to educate white people what to do and she can only do that because she has a team of people who give her the ability to say what she wants to say. She has no ability on her own to say what she wants to say without the support of white people. Got it. You feel what I'm saying? You trying to be woke white out here, y'all. That's what you're trying to be. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I know it. I am so woke right now. Or, wait. Was that me being too dominant? Oh, man. I don't want to assume to know anything unless a black person tells me that what I think is valid. Which is not their job to do, of course. I, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, I am a wretched, wretched creature. Damn my skin color. And that's the difference between a white savior and a white ally. What are you going to be? Me? Well, I have no idea. If I call myself a white ally, I can only assume that it would be a statement made of presumptive arrogance. And that would make me a white savior. So, I think there's only one safe course of action for me. And it's a whopper. Strange game. The only winning move is not to play. As always, Thank you for watching.